So what you'll need to make both of these costumes would be 12 yards of burlap, a hot glue gun and a bag of glue sticks, black yarn and a thick needle, one or two yards of brown felt and one small sheet of black felt, a thrift store dress, black tights, bugs, dollar store mask and cardboard, red, black, and green acrylic paint, 16 ounces of model magic clay from Crayola, and one bag of stuffing. Now I started off with this clay from Walmart that I do not recommend because it cracked and broke so I had to switch to Crayola Model Magic, which is much better. I also used this dollar store mask and some cardboard for the base of my Oogie mask. Now here I'm just cutting out a piece for the lower lip of Oogie to rest on. And then I hot glued that to the dollar store mask. And I cut some fins into the cardboard to make it a lot easier to work with and to make it more flexible. I sketched out a rough shape for the eyes and mouth using a sharpie. And then I took my clay and started molding it into the shape I wanted. For Oogie, I'm just following a tutorial made by Lynn's Mushel here on YouTube, which I will link down below in the description for you guys. I just used her video for all of my Oogie references for the face and body. Now the most important thing to remember is that Oogie's eyes and mouth will need to be very prominent and his nose needs to be flat since he doesn't really have one. And we'll be putting burlap over this later so it doesn't need to be super detailed. Now one mistake I made with my mask was not making a base first and then building up the lips and eyes on top because even with the model magic it did crack later on so just be sure all of your clay is smooth and connected to prevent that. And unfortunately this is what happened with my first attempt using the Walmart clay so I just did the same molding process with model magic and that ended up much better. And I ended up using two 8 ounce packages of white model magic and had some left over which I used to make the dice later. Now I tried using the elastic from the dollar store mask, but that didn't end up working out because even though I hot glued it and put clay on top of it, it still wasn't strong enough to hold Oogie onto my head. So here is the mask all dry, which took about two to three days, and be sure to remove it from the dollar store mask so the inside can dry as well, and then prop it up so it doesn't lose its shape. Now I painted it black because you could absolutely see the white through the burlap on top. And I got a pair of black girls tights from the dollar store for $1 and used that for the eyes and mouth. I cut open both legs and hot glued the pieces onto the mask. Now for the eyes, I had to stretch the fabric in order to be able to see out of it because these tights were a little on the thicker side, but that ended up working out just fine. For the burlap part, I cut out a rectangular piece of cloth about the size I wanted for the head, and then I cut indentations into the mouth and the eyes. Now, when it comes to this part, be sure to measure twice and cut once because I didn't and I ended up having to patch one of the eyes because I miscalculated how much material I needed. <laughs> and then I just used a hot glue stick to make sure the glue laid flat inside of the mouth and the eyes. Now, since my strap from the mask earlier didn't work, I made myself a little cone hat, so attractive I know, out of brown felt for the mask to sit on. Then I glued that to the back of the boogie mask around the forehead area top of the rectangle into a triangle cone shape and I did the same with the back piece for the head. Then I hot glued the seams together while the mask was inside out and it went over the seams with stitching. I also added a little bit of stuffing inside the tail of his head and to make it fold properly I added a few stitches on the bottom of the cone. And this is what the head looks like all done and finished. I was really really happy with how this came out. So for the body of Oogie, I folded the burlap in half after measuring how long I wanted it to be. Now for reference, my boyfriend is six foot one, so I just measured him standing up from his feet to his shoulders. And I laid down the burlap and drew my round, curvy Oogie shape, and then cut through both layers so that when I unfolded it, both sides were completely symmetrical. Hopefully that makes sense. And my boyfriend's cat Kitty was very excited about the burlap and she laid on it any time I left it unsupervised. Now I cut out a back piece in the same way and I laid them over each other and then I hot glued the seams. So I used the hot glue stick to make sure everything was nice and smooth and that both sides stuck together perfectly. Then I flipped it right side out just like when you do when you're sewing and I pinned and glued the bottom seam as well with some help from Kitty. For the arms and legs, I had my boyfriend sit on the burlap on the floor and I sketched around the length and width of his limbs. These are the arms, and remember you're going to need a front and back part for each one, so I have four here. Now for the hands, I included a little opening for his hands to come through so he'd be able to use his hands without having to take off the entire costume. 
And for the feet, I did the exact same thing, minus the hand opening, obviously. And then I glued the arms onto the costume and got out my brown felt to make some pockets to add some stuffing. Now the stuffing will add some weight to the bottom of the costume and make it more of that chunky oogie shape. I cut out two pieces, one for each side of the costume, and then I cut out some pieces for the neck area as well, since burlap is very itchy and very scratchy. This needle that I used was perfect for this since it's very big and sturdy, and it was able to go through all the layers of burlap with no issue. And for the stitching, I just used black yarn. I went up the sides of the costume along all of the seams, and I alternated regular straight stitches and cross stitches. You could just cut stitches out of black felt if you don't want to sew, but I found this to be much easier, faster, and it also helped hold the costume together. Kitty was just adorable throughout this whole process. She was climbing under the burlap, batting at it with her claws, and then I tried to give her her own little piece of string, but she was not happy with it. I highly recommend having a cat to pet or play with while working. It definitely made it a lot more fun. Then I stitched the rest of the body in the exact same way, and I made sure to go up the bottoms of the arm as well as the top. Then I glued the pouches to the inside of both sides of the body, leaving the tops open so I could stuff them and remove the stuffing later. Then I took the rest of my bag of stuffing and just put it in both sides of the costume, putting more in the front than in the back. And then after the stuffing was all in, I turned it right side out and tried it on. Now for the feet, I did the exact same thing as with the arms and stitched them up the sides with the yarn and I thought you guys would appreciate my avocado slippers. <laughs> then I knotted the yarn and turned the feet right side out. For the dice, I took the leftover clay from the mask and made two cubes, and I used my skull ring to make the holes for each side. My ring just happened to be the exact perfect size to make dice holes for these. Then using a reference from Etsy of the dice, I carved the skull shapes into each side and I'm using the same needle that I was using before here to sculpt and shape the clay. And for the paint, I mixed black and red as a base color for the dice, and then I put black in later in all the cracks and crevices and the dice holes, and then I highlighted everything using red. And when I was painting these, I kind of tried to make everything in one stroke in one direction for each side. That way it kind of made it look a little bit more like wood instead of just a piece of clay. Now for Mrs. Oogie, I used this mannequin form to fill out the dress so I could work on it. And this is what the dress looked like before, just a plain black dress from Charlotte Ruse that I found at Goodwill. And I took a strip of burlap for the collar first to see how stretchy it would be and how it would mold to the fabric just as a test. Spoiler alert, burlap is not very stretchy. And this is what the dress looked like before. I just wanted to try it on to give you guys an idea of what it looked like. And all of the top parts of my dress were actually made from scraps from the Oogie Boogie costume, which is why I made that first. That way I didn't waste any burlap and I was able to get more out of it. Full disclaimer here, I do not know how to sew or make any kind of clothing, so I did not know what I was doing for my costume since I wasn't really following a tutorial, just a few photos for inspiration. So I just kind of spun it around and pinned different pieces on until I was happy with it. But these are what the main pieces of the bodice ended up looking like. And once they were pinned on, I drew little pointy shapes on top of that that I cut out and then mirrored using black felt. And I used that just to make it stand out a little bit more from the original dress. You're getting some stuff done. What do you think of my dress so far? And my parakeet, Alice, helped me as well. She is just so stinking cute. I had to show you guys a few clips of her. She's adorable. So this is what I had come up with for the shape, but when I asked my best friend and boyfriend what they thought, they both agreed that the black in the middle of the front of the bodice just looked like nipple windows. So <laughs> I scrapped that idea. Using the same black yarn as earlier, I stitched my bodice pieces on. And to get rid of the nipple windows, I just took another piece of scrap burlap and pinned it in place. And then I sewed that underneath my original design.
Now, I wanted to add some bugs, so I picked up about four or five bags of them at my local Dollar Tree. They were only a dollar each, but I got way too many. Realistically, I only used about one bag, and then I painted them all green, and then hot glued them to my bodice. And this is what the final looked like. I was really, really happy with how the green looked against the black and the burlap on the dress. And I also ended up cutting off the bottom pieces of burlap because I decided to use a corset for the middle of my costume so nothing would be seen there anyway. Now for the skirt, I wrapped one layer of burlap right around me and I pinned and cut it to fit. It's a bit hard to see here, but the pins are in one straight line up the back of the skirt. And I pinned it to my shape while wearing the burlap. Then following the pins, I stitched up the side and added some velcro for the closure at the top. Then I sewed and pinned it inside out, then turned it right side out so the stitches didn't show in the back and it made a nice seam just like you would when you're sewing with regular thread. For the pleats on the bottom, I used a kind of accordion pleat, folding one layer of the burlap over itself, trying to make sure all the pleats were the exact same size. Then I clothespins them together and I used four pieces to make the skirt. Each piece was one layer of burlap, so I laid out one long strip that was folded over and cut it down the middle, leaving me with two identical pieces. Each one was one piece of the skirt. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> So I had my four bundles of cloth for the pleats, and to make sure they stayed pleated the way I wanted them to, I put a few stitches in the tops of each. And I'm cursing myself here for not being in frame, but I essentially just took each bundle of pleats, stuffed the pleat up under my skirt while wearing it, arranged them how I wanted, and then sewed them directly onto the skirt while wearing it, as you see here. And I did that for all four pieces turning the skirt around on myself so I could see what I was doing since I didn't have a spare set of legs to put the skirt on. And this is how it came out. I am super happy with it since I've never made anything like this before. I've never made a dress, I've never made a skirt, nothing. And I also ended up adding some stitching up the middle of the skirt because it just felt too plain to me. 